Harmony, where are you I apologize from? in advance if my 65 pound dog toddler jumps into the frame or if you hear him <laughs> chewing in the background like he is right now. We'll hope that he, uh, I tried to wear him out this morning in hopes that he would be a really well behaved webinar attendee. So we'll hope for the best here on that front. And I think we'll go ahead and get started here. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I know um, this is a new thing for some of you and uh, for others that were part of the SP of SoCal territory. This is something that you're familiar with and you may have missed. So I'm really happy that I was able to bring you Gut Marketing back um, and kind of walk you through it so that you can utilize this tool on a monthly basis to help market what you do in your practice the services you offer, your nutritional information, and really be a trusted source of that information for your patients and new potential patients and followers online. Let me admit this okay. This is not going to the next slide here, which is concerning. Okay, we might have to go old school way. So a little bit about me. Um, I've been with Standard Process now for four years. I started with SP of SoCal, which merged at the end of 2019, starting here with 2020. And now most of the clients that I worked with before are part of SPLA, as am I, and I'm happy to be. Um, during my time with Standard Process, I completed the ACN program, the Applied Clinical Nutritionist program that many of you have also accomplished or you're working towards. And if you don't know what that is, happy to provide you the information on that. Um, it's a great program. Here we go, we got Lyme in the, in the frame. Um, I also became a certified personal trainer last year through the National Academy of Sports Medicine, just to kind of further my education and knowledge of the body and how nutrition works in the body and really just help what I do as a marketing specialist for you, just even know more about what uh, we do. I'm, oh, here we go. Now we're, now we're, now we're rocking. Um, I am a runner also because I almost have no choice other than to be because I am a Weimaraner mom and Weimaraners love to run. So if I'm not running, I've got trouble in my house. <laughs> There's my wine right there, a lupo. And uh, during quarantine, I somehow became a tie-dye artist and made him that tank and bandana and have now been making bandanas for several friends' dogs as well. So that's kind of been my creative outlet while we've been stuck inside. Okay, what is You've Got Marketing? So I hope, um, I'm assuming that most of you are all on this webinar because you saw the You've Got Marketing email that went, went out, and we're going to take a look at it right now. But a little background info on the You've Got Marketing email. It's a monthly bundle that I started probably a year and a half ago um, when I was helping another standard process territory. And now I'm getting to bring it to you guys. So this was your first You've Got Marketing monthly bundle that came out. And it's chock full of social media posts, captions, hashtags, I always include a pro tip and that changes on a monthly basis. There's always like an article or some sort of statistic that I include to give you more information on why marketing is so important and different ways that people are using marketing um, in your field, things like that. I typically always include some type of feedback question. So you'll notice that on this month's You've Got Marketing, I was asking, what type of content do you want? Do you want content on purification? Do you want content on children's nutrition? Um, I encourage you and it really, I really hope that um, you guys take the time when you are going through the You've Got Marketing to answer those because it really helps me help you. You know, I'm here in front of a laptop creating the content and it's not, uh, I'm not in your practice. I don't know the information that would really best serve you. So those questions are my way of kind of finding out what really would mean the most to you and be the most helpful. 
And I'm always willing to customize posts. So I want you to know that now that's a biggie. Um, I know there's things that I may create and you're like, oh gosh, I love this post, but I don't really use that immune product as much in my office. I use this immune product. Well, shoot me a text or email me and I'd be happy to swap out the product on that post to better speak to what you know works for you and what you're most comfortable with using, okay? So let's take a quick look here. I'm gonna pull up the um, You've Got Marketing that just recently went out. I think my computer is just not really wanting to work with me as much as I would like it to today, and that's fine. <laughs> so here's the You've Got Marketing campaign that went out. Um, this was our first send out for SPLA. So at the top, I always kind of give you a little intro because every month has content that is based on different focuses. So in the summer, we may work on uh, focus on products that have to do with skin health, things like that. So this intro was obviously just welcoming you to this You've Got Marketing campaign that you'll now be receiving. Um, and it is free to you. I want to make that completely clear. Um, I know people have had questions about that before. This content I'm making as a free resource for you to use. You can customize it however you want, use it however you fee see best suits you and your practice. There's no strings attached, okay? Um, here I've included an article that was actually written by one of the speakers on the Standards Process Speakers Bureau, Dr. Zagragan, and this is on how social media can best benefit your practice. Strongly recommend reading that, especially during this time. Marketing is just invaluable. I mean, when we're having to go virtual and do a lot from home, marketing is really your e-ticket into reaching your patients, reaching new clients, and educating your your patients further on what they need to be taking right now. I always include a pro tip, as you'll see here. Um, I'm gonna just briefly go over this because I know um, in my conversations with some practitioners, they've been a little confused on what to post right now. And I, I totally understand that. I would say try to keep a positive, um, outlook and positive posts, but I think the biggest pro tip I can give you is to share what you're doing. And I think this was also something really important that Dr. Anderson shared um, on the virtual catalyst we did. And that's that he's sharing the protocol that he's taking himself. You know, you are the trusted source of information to your patients and your community. And ultimately, they want to know what you're doing. And so it's really important that you're sharing, hey, this is what I'm taking every single morning. This is what I'm taking before bed. Um, and we call that organic content. So that's like the second piece here to my pro tip. Um, what organic content means, it means that it's not a repost from some other doctor that you found or some sort of perfectly created content, right? So the content that's in this email, that is not organic content. Do I still want you to use it? Yes, you still want to use professionally created content with the pretty colors and the perfect pictures. That's all very, very important. But you want to include those pictures of you eating your healthy breakfast, you taking your immune supplements, your SP complete shake in the morning, because it really creates the relationship between you and your patients, you and your following, and furthers the trust that they have in you. Um, let me create, I have a few people saying, let's see, did that help? I see that people are trying, they can't see my video for some reason. Can you guys not see what I'm going through right now for the This should be sharing right now. I'm sorry, guys. Are we good? Can you see? Okay, perfect. I think some people could see it, some people could not. Glad glad we're all we're all straightened out. Okay, perfect. So, 
this is the You've Got Marketing Bundle for those of you that could not see it. Um, as I said, we've got a small little intro here, an article, the pro tip that I was speaking on. So yes, just to wrap that up, strongly, strongly, strongly cannot recommend enough posting pictures of what you're doing during this time. That really resonates the most with your following and mix it in with some of the professionally created posts. Um, I always include some hashtags. Instagram allows for 30 hashtags on every post. And so I always provide 15. Reason being you should not use the same 30 hashtags on every post. That's going to work against you and it's not going to provide you as large of a web and as large of a reach as you could have. So I give you 15 and then I hope and I pray that you add the second 15 and you want to make those hashtags really relate to what you're posting. So if you're posting bone broth soup that you made for lunch, you know, hashtag bone broth. You want to categorize that picture by using the hashtag. That's what hashtags are. They're a way to make sure that anyone that's looking up bone broth is going to see your post. Anybody that's looking up immune boosting is going to see your post. So you want to think of the things people might be looking up at this time so that they can find and land on your content. I know that that can be a little confusing, so please let me know if that is. I'm happy to walk anybody through that that's not uh, familiar with hashtags. I do want to add in that um, Instagram is an ever-changing platform, and I want to remind anyone that may not know this that you want to do your hashtags immediately after posting your picture. Um, the way that Instagram now works is that based on your initial engagement, which means the initial activity that occurs with that post, likes, comments, that is what's going to make Instagram show that post to more people. So I know it sounds a little messed up, but that's the way that it works. If you get 15 likes in the first 15 minutes, Instagram's going to go, hey, wow, okay, people are liking this post. I'm going to show this post to more of their followers. If no one's really liking or commenting on it, Instagram's like, eh, I'm gonna prioritize this other person's post. It's, it's getting more attention. So the way that you get that initial attention is by putting those hashtags there immediately, hoping that um, you'll kind of expand the reach of that post and get more engagement, okay? Um, and can, uh, to answer your question, you know, you can use hashtags on both Instagram and Facebook. They're not for Instagram only. I would just say personally that I see the most result and the most return um, on Instagram when it comes to hashtags. So I recommend you do them in both places. That's fine. I would not recommend doing 30 on Facebook. It just gets really messy. And I do actually recommend to a lot of my clients to do the hashtags in a separate comment versus the caption of your picture because you want when people see your picture that they just see the picture in your caption versus the caption and then all this mess of hashtags. It's just not, not easy on the eyes and people gravitate towards things that are easy on the eyes. So generally I write the caption for my picture and then I'll go into a separate comment on that picture and put my 30 hashtags so they don't really interfere with one another. Um, and just so you know, this PowerPoint will be made available to you and this is being recorded. So the recording will also be made available to anybody that is um, tuned in, okay? And let me know now if the video is working for everybody and it's big enough to see me. So for this month, um, as I said, each month we pick different themes that uh, the content will speak to. And so this month, I really focus on content that would speak to what we're going through right now. And so I, I started with having a virtual practice. Um, I know some of you are still going into the office, some of you are not. And so I wanted to offer some posts that would speak to your patients in regards to that. So first one being patient direct. We've been sending out a lot of info on patient direct to you as practitioners. Please reach out if you're still unfamiliar with what that program is. Um, in a nutshell, it's essentially an online nutrition store that was created by Standard Process. 
it's managed by standard process and it's protected meaning that when you create an account with patient direct you get a unique practitioner code that you provide to your patients your patients log in with that code and they can order their current supplements or start a new protocol things like that so i can always go into more detail on that um, on a one-on-one -on -one, but i wanted anyone that is using it or going to be using it um, to have a chance to market that, whether it be on Facebook and your email newsletters. Um, secondly, I have one for dropship. You are able to dropship any packages from standard process. So if you place an order for a patient, you can actually input their address and have that shipment go directly to their home versus your home or your practice. So I wanted to highlight that as well. And lastly, Zoom. Here we are. Um, I know a lot of practitioners are using this for new patient consultations, patient appointments. Practitioners are hosting webinars, which I think is really awesome, um, and providing an educational webinar for their patients uh, because many patients are kind of looking for that trusted resource of information. And if they are someone who aligns with our philosophies and our holistic visions, you know, they're going to want that information from you. So, um, as you can see here, I put at the top that these three posts I can definitely customize for you because I know everybody's going to be using these three uh, tools a little bit differently. So if you're drop shipping to patients, but you're only drop shipping if they've ordered a minimum of $100, I'm happy to add that detail onto the post for you, not a problem, okay? Um, next, we have immune system support. So I um, highlighted Conjuplex, Andrographis Complex, and Immuplex. Um, again, I've included captions here. As you can see, you can copy and paste these. You can change them. You can delete them. I mean, it really doesn't matter to me. I've included them to help you if it helps you. Um, and here I've included a few corporate animations. These are made by Standard Process. And you can use these however you see fit, whether it be in a newsletter. Um, I included some quotes on this one, some uplifters, just to try to create some positivity and hope for people. I also included some email headings. And you can really use these anywhere. I mean, some people just use these as a post on their Facebook. But for those of you that send out a monthly newsletter, these are really great to kind of highlight a certain section of your newsletter. If you're going to be talking about immune support, you could use the immune health header. Um, or if you're talking about your, your ability to offer, you know, patient direct, you can use that one as well. And as I noted earlier, I always kind of include some type of question that I, I really value the answers to so much because it helps me help you. So here I've asked, you know, what are some topics that you would like to see content on? Um, and at the end of the day, if you look at this and you're like, well, those are cool, but I really, I really need content about this, please reply to the email, let me know. Um, that, that feedback is really important to me and I, I love to create what you're going to ultimately love. So uh, please, I welcome all of that feedback. Now, when it comes to using this bundle, it's super easy. Um, I, let's say the Conjuplex post is something that really stands out to you. You simply click on it, it opens up, and you can save this to your computer. I recommend um, creating a folder. That's what I've done. Um, I created a You've Got Marketing folder, and that's it's right here. I click on You've Got Marketing. And I'm going to save it into this folder. I, I try to keep the names of the pictures in line with what they are so that when you're looking at a big folder, you can kind of see what you're looking for, if that makes sense. Um, I know some practitioners just go ahead and kind of save everything to their folder. And I think that's a really smart idea. You don't have to go searching for it later and trying to remember God, what month was that in? Because right now you only have one month, you have April, but as this continues to grow, you know, by September, you're going to have several months of you've got marketing and you might be focusing on immune health in your office and you're going to be like, oh shoot, 
you know, what, what email was that in? How am I going to find it? So it is helpful to just kind of save all of these posts to one folder. Um, and for those of you that have, you know, receptionists or assistants that kind of manage your social media, it makes it just organized for the whole office as well, because they can just kind of go into that folder and utilize anything that's in there. Um, so it just keeps everything together. Um, having said that too, I know some people get a little weary about reposting something that they've posted in the past. You know, do not think that every follower has seen every post that you've used. If you post this Conjaplex post now in April, you can definitely post it again in September or, you know, people need to see it multiple times anyways for it to resonate and really stick with them. So don't uh, be weary about that, okay? And um, I'm, getting, I'm getting some good questions here. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna briefly go through these. Thank you for all of the awesome feedback that I'm getting as well. If anyone needs me to slow down, uh, please let me know. I am just trying to make sure we also have time for questions at the end. So um, that works with all of these. You simply click and save, and then you can post them directly to anything, really, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter. Um, you can upload them into your email newsletters, whatever it may be, okay? Um, if there's any questions so far, send them in. And I am going to go back to the PowerPoint for a second here. Okay. And, and one last note I want to put on the customizations. There were several practitioners um, that I worked with before that I thought it was really cool. They would actually put their practice logo on the post. And, and that's something, again, I want you to know you're more than welcome to do. These are not like copyrighted posts. You can use them however your, you know, heart desires. So um, I, I, I think that's a really awesome idea. If you want to put your logo anywhere on those posts, you are more than welcome to. Um, so going to the next slide here, I did want to just highlight the fact that standard process also does provide social media um, posts. There's not a ton of them. I'm gonna give you a little quick look now and I will send this link out to everyone, but I just wanted you to know that um, it's kind of hidden on the website. And so for those of you that didn't know it was there, I want you to know that it's there. I'll, I'm gonna just quickly take you to it now. Perfect. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see this. So this is the social media gallery on standard process. You have static assets. What that means is these are pictures that don't move. They're just static images. Um, they're all made for Instagram or Facebook. There's a few here you'll see that have the static image option. And then there's also a video option, which might have um, a little movement. Standard process keeps it pretty classy and simple. So it'll be maybe just a little movement, um, but we can click on this one. Let's see, maybe, oh, it just went straight to downloading. So we'll check on that. Um, they also have some animated assets, which are the, a few of the ones that I included on the You've Got Marketing bundle that I sent out. So those are just fun. They kind of spice up your feed a little bit, give a little movement. Um, I like that like it shows the ingredients. That's pretty cool. But as you can see, that's, you know, it ends there, but it's still just a cool little resource to know exists, okay? And uh, we can see, I wanna see if like all of these just automatically. Okay, so as soon as you click on the little link here, it just automatically downloads, and then you can click on it. It's already saved to your computer, okay? Um, so I'm gonna take a little pause and answer some of these questions. 
which social media area should I start out with if I can only handle one of them, which has been the most successful for health-minded demographics. Um, so I'm getting a lot of questions on like what works best, and um, and then I have a second question here. What's a reasonable number of emails to send that won't make them stop opening emails? Okay, great questions. So I highly recommend um, starting with Instagram. Reason being that Instagram and Facebook are now both owned by Facebook. And so they really work well together. And anything you post on Instagram can automatically be sent to your Facebook. And so for me, that's just really like killing two birds with one stone. You kind of can, you know, cover two bases there with one push of the button. And so that's how I manage our social media. I start with Instagram. I do my posts there. I do my hashtags and my caption and all that good stuff. And then I send it straight to the SPLA Facebook account. In just one little swipe of a button, it goes to both. So I would definitely recommend starting with Instagram just so that you can tackle both at the same time. Um, unfortunately, it does not work the other way around. So you cannot have a Facebook and then send it to Instagram. Instagram doesn't let anybody in. It sends things out, but it doesn't let you send things in, okay? Um, so definitely open to explaining that more if there's any confusion there, but I would definitely uh, recommend starting with Instagram for that one reason alone. As far as a reasonable amount of emails to send to your list, you know, I think the key there is just creating value in the content and making them a little bit different. So, you know, it really, you'll, you'll be able to gauge it if you're starting to get a lot of unsubscribes or something, uh, cool it down. I would say like two to three is a happy place. Um, and that could mean that one of those three is just one that you've resent to people that did not open it, which um, a lot of email companies provide that ability to resend that email to people that didn't open it the first time. And that's really helpful. Um, don't, you know, don't beat yourself up and think that people aren't opening it because they don't want to. Um, I know for myself, and I'm sure you can all relate that especially right now, we're getting emails from every company from every direction. And so you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, a hundred new emails. So sometimes it's not that people are tuning out, um, but they're just, they're, they're a little overwhelmed and it does not hurt to resend that email to them if they did not open it because they will open it that second time. I'm sure many of you know, um, even for retail companies, like I'll, I'll uh, put something in my cart and then they'll send me an email saying, Hey, I don't think you finished your purchase or whatever. And I hate it, but it works. It's like seeing something for a second time kind of really like pushes it, that little extra bit. So um, don't be afraid to do that. And yes, that is two to three emails a week. Um, I don't want to say that and overwhelm anybody who's like, Oh my God, I only send out once a month. That's, that's fine. If that's where you're at right now, I'm just saying what a good max would be a good happy place um, would be. Is, is two to three a week. But if you're doing like a monthly email, totally fine. Your patients and your email list is probably used to that. So just make it a really great value. And again, I would still recommend resending that email to people that didn't open it to make sure you're reaching as many people as possible, okay? Um, please, if you've got extra questions on that, totally happy to answer them. Um, I'm going to go back to the slide here. Um, so something I wanted to touch on that was like a really cool, just thought provoking thing that came up and I wanted to share it with you was this, this idea of, are you a lighthouse or are your lights out? Um, and it just really speaks to your role in your community and your role as a practitioner, you know, your community and your patients are genuinely looking to you for hope. They're looking to you for a positive outlook and they're looking to you for answers and you're in a very lucky position because you have all of those things. You have answers, you have hope to give and you have positivity because you know you have things that work and you know that you have um, tools to help people during this time, whether it be just to de-stress them or to help boost their immune system, whatever it may be. Um, and so when it comes to that, I really want you to think about what you're choosing to communicate to your patients. 
I, you know, I know there's so much information out right now with what's going on and it's really important to embrace the voice that you want to be during this time. You know, what are you choosing to communicate in your newsletters, your social media posts, on your Facebook? You know, what are, what are your current practices? Are, you, are your lights out or are you, you know, really still trying to serve your community and, you know, help people stay strong through this? It's just something to think about, you know, um, again, just going back to people wanting to know what you're doing during this time. What you're communicating through your marketing is really going to speak volumes when it comes to that. And, you know, you want people to get closer to you and seek you out even more and find more value in you during this time versus like pushing away if, if you're posting kind of, um, you know, you don't want to be a negative voice right now is all I'm saying. Um, so just something to think about and really try to be a lighthouse during this time and be someone that your patients can really rely on and feel like they can trust going to. Um, just an important uh, food for thought. And um, I'm open to take extra questions right now. I'm so glad that you all joined me for this. I want to remind you the recording will be made available to all the registrants and you will have access to the PowerPoint as well. Um, and before I start answering any additional questions, I want to kind of Share some things that I had done in the SP of SoCal territory. I had also made some tutorials on how to best use Twitter, how to best use Instagram, how to best use Facebook. I'm more than happy to either host webinars on those topics specifically or create those tutorials if those are things that you would really find value in. Um, or if you would just kind of like a more in-depth marketing webinar, I know this was, you know, this was more of a foundational tutorial and really walking through this You've Got Marketing resource so that um, you were looking out for it in your email inbox and comfortable using it. I will note that the You've Got Marketing email every month is sent out with that same subject line. And the reason I do that is so that it is really easy to find in your inbox. Um, so when you do search, you've got marketing, you know, four months in, it should be those four emails that you've got and they'll all stay together um, so that you can easily access them. If you haven't been saving everything to your computer, you can at least find them a little bit more easily. So um, let me know what your thoughts are on that. If, if those tutorials would be helpful, if, a more focused webinar on just one social media platform would be helpful. I'm happy, more than happy to do that. Um, and I've been doing one-on-one -on -one calls as well with, with clients and practitioners. So more than happy to do that as well. Um, I'm gonna go back to this slide really quick so you can jot this down. Again, I'll be sending out this presentation, but there is my email address and my cell phone number. You're more than welcome to email me or text me with any questions. Again, if you need anything customized, I'm happy to do so. Um, let me go back here and see what questions we've got coming in. Okay, well, it seems I got more questions during. Yes, as I said, you will get this um, recording sent to you so you can go through it again um, more slowly. Let's see here. Oh, thanks, Kim. I'm really glad you were able to join us. I'll stay on. Um, I'll stay on until anybody's got extra questions here. Um, again, if anybody wasn't on for this question um, about hashtags being used for Instagram only, I had, I just noticed more of a return on the hashtags when using them on Instagram. They are definitely a tool you can use on Facebook as well. Um, but I do see more of that reach happening on Instagram. Um, if you don't already have your Instagram switched over to a business account, 
please, 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 please do that. Um, that's also something I had created a tutorial on that will help you immensely. When your Instagram is a business account, it gives you access to all this free data that will help you so much. It will tell you what time of day most of your followers are active on Instagram, which is the time of day you're going to want to post. If more of your, you know, followers are on at 11 a.m., that's when you want to try to, you know, kind of capitalize on them being online and getting their likes and getting their comments because that's going to drive the Instagram algorithm as it's called and get your post to even more people. So um, to just briefly go over that again, I want to make sure everyone understood that Instagram shows your posts to more people based on the initial activity that that post got. So if your post was getting a lot of likes and comments in the first 30 minutes, Instagram goes, oh, wow, okay, this must be a cool post. I'm going to show it to more people. If it doesn't get those likes and comments, Instagram's like, eh, we'll save this one and we'll show this other person's post to everybody. So you want to try to capitalize on that activity time. And um, the Instagram business account will also tell you what age group most of your followers are, you know, how many uh, people saved that post or sent it to a friend. I mean, these are just invaluable, like, you know, pieces of data. So if you don't know how to do that, please let me know. You should really have your Instagram set to being a business account. Um, so hashtags do not have to be spaced. That's a great question. I do space them just because I have a bit of OCD and it just looks too messy to me when they're all together, but um, it doesn't generally affect it. Um, I just, I like to put it. So I do like hashtag standard process space hashtag MediHerb space. Um, that's just, that's how I like to do it. Make sure, you know, you can't use any hyphenations or apostrophes. There's, there's none of that in hashtags. So if you were to go like, um, if I wrote hashtag Harmony's favorite and I put Harmony apostrophe S, the hashtag is now only Harmony. It's going to cut whatever else you wrote off. So make sure you don't use any um, apostrophes or exclamation marks or anything like that. Uh, Dr. Alonzo, I, I wish we could, I could do this weekly. I wish, but we're on a monthly basis right now. Let's see here. As an alternative to us doing this media platform management, if we were to need someone to do all this social media, where do we find these folks? Um, you know, that's a great question. There are a lot of programs that offer this. There's one that we used to um, kind of share. They were called Amplified. I would have to check what their service offers now, but they were a great service that you could pay. I think it was an annual or monthly fee and they handled everything for you, your, your Instagram, your Facebook. They were a great company. I've also heard there's a few practitioners that offer this um, as well. Some practitioners that are kind of national speakers, they have created their own kind of uh, private service for this and and then you kind of know that the source that's sharing for you is a trusted source because they're aligned with standard process and you know holistic nutrition and things like that so I can I can try to dig up some of that info for you um, oh I love this idea and I'm totally um, I'm totally on board with this um, if everybody wants to message this in, I think this is a really cool idea. And this was something that really was popular when Instagram first changed its algorithm. Basically, we have a great question here asking if we can all share our Instagram names here so we can all follow and support each other and like the post posts for one another to help get more engagement. So I had actually um, in my follow up email was going to include all of the SPLA social media info yours but I think it would be really cool if everybody would be up for this um, if you want to all send those to me I would love to share everybody's with one another because originally I wanted to be connected with you all on social media but it would be really cool that we're all connected uh, with one another so I'm up for that whoever would like to have theirs shared with the group by all means message it in and I will um, send out like a little community social media share and that way we can all like each other's posts to try to help each other boost that activity level and boost that engagement so that our posts go out to our patients because it's not just about 
your post being shown to strangers. Your, your own following and your own patients won't see your posts if it's not getting activity. That's just the way the game works. Um, so great idea there. Sure, that's a, this is another great question. Um, and, and on that note, yes, as I said, I'm going to be sharing our um, Instagram, but it is scannerprocess.losangeles. So please follow us there. I've recently taken over that account, so I'm excited to kind of be sharing um, more of the content I'm talking about now. Um, but yes, a great follow-up question to, um, to the previous was, do I have any recommendations for growing followers? I definitely do. Um, I want to start out by saying that I know from a lot of my one-on-one -on -one conversations with practitioners that it's easy to kind of get in this this, I don't want to say tunnel vision, but very focused on just gaining followers that are uh, potential patients. And yes, you do obviously want to try to gain following that, are, you know, from people that could be patients, but ultimately you want to kind of just also think about gaining a following because one day there's going to be a potential patient that's going to come to your social media and they're going to say, oh my gosh, wow, this person has let's say just 5,000 followers, let's say that. That number gives you automatic credibility, okay? That new patient's gonna come to your page and think you have a lot more credibility based on 5,000 followers versus 50 followers. They are not going to care if 1,999 of them live in Florida. Like, so don't focus on that. Um, and the way for growing your following is one using hashtags because hashtags just spreads out your web. It makes your reach just, just, I mean, you can reach way more people that way. And that's why it's really important to make sure you're choosing smart hashtags and making sure they speak to what you're posting. If I post a picture of me and my dog in the poppy reserves, I'm going to hashtag poppies, hashtag poppy reserve hashtag flowers, hashtag spring, anything that speaks to that content. Because that way, when someone else later on goes, oh my gosh, I heard about this poppy reserve, let me look that up. And they look up poppy reserve, my picture's there. So you wanna be really smart about what you're hashtagging. Um, the other thing I strongly recommend is making sure you're tagging um, the brands that you're using in the pictures that you're posting so that it, that picture will automatically also show up on that person's tagged photos. So whether it's your standard process supplements, I mean, I do this with everything. If I'm making a bone broth soup and I'm using this product from Whole Foods, I'm gonna tag that product's company. I'm gonna tag Whole Foods. I'm gonna tag everyone I can on that picture because now that picture is also going to show up on Whole Foods page. And now I'm gonna be able to access all of the eyes from people that are following Whole Foods. And then I'm also going to be able to, you know, gain all the followers from the product. So whatever that product may be, all the followers that are following that company are going to see what I posted. Let's say it's, it's Bulletproof Collagen or something like that. You know, whatever it may be, you're, you're just, you're broadening your reach. You're reaching more and more people. So those two things alone um, are really important. And then what I stress all the time, I know it's time consuming, I know it can be tedious, but you have to go engage. You have to go online and find people that like the things that you like, are interested in the things you like, and like their pictures and comment on their pictures. And they're gonna be like, oh, who's this liking my stuff? They're gonna go to your page and be like, oh, wow, okay, cool, I, I like their info, I find value in what they're posting, I'm gonna follow them. And even if they just like your picture and they don't follow you, okay, that's one more like. And, and then maybe, you know, they'll see your stuff again somehow else. But that's a really, really biggie. And I know people say, well, how do I find people that like the same things that I like? Go to Standard Processes Instagram. Go to Whole Foods Instagram. Go to Mother's Market, whatever it may be. And, and go through some of their followers and go to their followers' pages and, and just be personable and, and like some of their posts and and that's how you create that engagement and that connection. And people will trust me. It is the fastest way to gain following. I promise you that. Perfect. We're getting some accounts on here. That was a really great, great question. And I hope that I covered some, uh, 
good bases with that. Um, so I know we're at time here. I'm, I'm, I'm welcome to stay. Uh, I'm welcome. I'm happy to stay on a few more minutes and answer any other questions. But um, you're, like I said, you're more than welcome to email me or text me. I appreciate you all being on online today and joining me for this. I hope everyone has a happy and healthy rest of the week. And I look forward to working with all of you and being a resource for all of you. And um, yeah, thanks so much. And look forward, look for this uh, recording um, in your inboxes. I'll be sending it out. Thank you all for uh, your support and your positivity. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.